Chrome DevTools has been releasing new features over the past weeks, months and years, but most of us developers are actually not aware of them and are not up to date. Well, for this video, I compiled a list of these kind of useful features that I'm pretty sure you're gonna need in your day-to-day -day coding. If you're ready, make sure to subscribe to this channel because I'm gonna be releasing more this kind of videos. And with that said, let's get started. All right, friends. So the very first feature we're gonna talk about has to do with AI. Yes, AI is already in our browsers. And to be specific, it's in our console. So all of us are getting warnings and errors and sometimes they are actually flooding our console. Well, now it's much easier to understand these errors and warnings. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hover over this type error to understand where exactly it's coming from and what exactly I need to do to fix it. And I'm gonna hover over this bubble saying, understand this error AI. And I have to agree to terms and conditions on using this because this data will be shared with the large language model. And I wait a second and I get an explanation. Well, it basically gives me all the description I need. Cannot read properties of null means that one of the elements you're trying to access is null. This happens because of that and that and accessing is this and this and the solution, basically bullet points of things that I need to check. And if you're still not satisfied, you can actually click this use search instead and, I will, and it will take you to an actual um, a Google search. How cool is that? I will be using this feature a lot, I believe. And this is already out from Chrome version 129. All right, so the next feature has to do with debugging um, backend and frontend data. So what does it mean? Well, imagine you have a coffee app like this and we're trying to fetch all the list of coffees here. And it's actually visible here. If I filter it, list.json that, that is being fetched with a get request and we get the names and the prices of each coffee and what they consist of. Now, let's say I wanna change the backend or I wanna see a cappuccino with a new price. Let's say we wanna make it 20 bucks instead of 19. Now I can go and change my backend values that I'm returning to the front end. But what if I wanna do a quick and dirty test on the front end. Well, one of the things I can do is actually inspect this element and manually change this value. And then if I refresh the page, it's unfortunately gonna fall back to 19 again. Well, now we have local overwrite. What does it mean? I can click, do a right click on this list.json, come here saying overwrite content, now Chrome is gonna ask me for a folder that I want to use for this. The reason is Chrome is gonna store all of that data locally on my laptop, like a cache. And I can select one of the folders. I, am, I can allow it to use the folder. And now every time this request is gonna be made to fetch the list of JSON, Chrome is gonna give it from my local computer. Now we can find Cappuccino here. We can change the value to 20 and I have to save it because it's an IDE. So now I save it and look, if if I refresh the page, now in the page, our cappuccino is 20 bucks. How cool is that? And every time I do this, it's gonna stay 20 bucks unless I remove this value from the overrides. And now, as you can see, we even have a tab called overrides, which basically is gonna mimic our structure here. Now, another cool thing is that you can also overwrite the headers, meaning not only the content, but if I click override headers, our headers are all editable. How cool is that? I can change any header here that I want and I can also add a new one. So let's say I wanna allow all the origins. So I'm gonna do that. And now I'm allowing a course on all origins. Now, if I refresh, you're not gonna notice any changes, but now we have course enabled for all the origins. And if I go to the sources tab, we're gonna see that our headers are actually also here and I can apply it to all the files and not only JSON. Well, go and use it guys, it's great. Well, another cool feature is related to core web vitals. And if you're into this topic, I'm sure you're gonna like it. So what do we have here? These are the metrics that are coming from Core Web Vitals. Largest content full paint, cumulative layout shift, and interaction to next paint. I'm gonna have a separate video on 
core web vitals. So stay tuned and actually let me know in the comments which of these topics you would like me to dig deeper into. But so far, we're going to have this performance step where we can measure the performance of our application in a very easy manner. So as soon as I click on one of these cups to add this to my cart, so I already have a lot of coffee, I think I would get caffeinated if I drink so much coffee. But now we get a metric for largest contentful paint, meaning our largest content on the page, which is probably the body at the moment has been loaded in 458 milliseconds, which is good, unless it's faster than 2.5 seconds. Cumulative layout shift not has not many things have changed their position upon load and interaction to next paint is quite quick as soon as I choose one of the coffees. So the animations are also quite smooth. Now what happens if I change the URL, I'm gonna add some query params, and I'm gonna say add number one. And now we can see that Oh, now our metrics have gotten worse because we loaded this ad very, very slowly. Now, okay, something's not great. Great, although the interaction to next paint is still very snappy. Now what I want to show you is the fact that we can now have benchmarks. So apart from this, which is very useful already, we can also have benchmark. Okay, so field data means Chrome has already collected the field data from this website when it was crawling this website, and it knows how these local metrics compared to real user data, some other users have visited this website, and Chrome knows how our website is visible to them. So I'm going to say set up and crux report Chrome UX report or crux for short, is basically what I just described, I'm going to agree to that. And I can select the URL. So I can either select the origin or your specific URL. And let's say for um, device auto and okay, again, and now we can see that well, my perception of this is 3.49 seconds, which is very slow. But usually, uh, people who are visiting our website would have quite a good experience, right? So they don't even have a cumulative layout shift and so on. Well, the reason is, actually, the field data doesn't take into account the query parameters. So it doesn't know that it's a different page. All right, this is very funny. So if we remove the query params, we're going to see that our local computer still loads much faster than what our users on the internet are perceiving. Okay, still good, still good. But it's good to see the difference. Well, since we talked about debugging and quality, I think it's the perfect time to introduce our sponsor of this video, Squish, which is an excellent tool for functional GUI test automation. So what is cool about Squish, you may ask? Well, Squish provides an efficient and agile automated GUI testing with multi toolkit applications. It has a ton of powerful features to tackle any testing challenges you might have. But some that I find the most beneficial are for example, recording and playback. You can record, edit and execute tests with Squish without a steep learning curve. It's very intuitive. The tool also offers extensive integration options. It's fully compatible with CI, CD systems and version control, streamlining your workflow for rapid development. Another cool example that I personally find very useful is image based testing that can help you catch any visual regressions on custom UI that is usually hard to test. Whether you're working with Java, Windows or anything else, Squish has you covered with powerful property based support. There are a lot of materials on Squish online, but I'd actually recommend trying out this interactive tour so you can see firsthand how exactly it works. You really get a good general idea and feel of the tool. If you want to support my channel, then make sure to check out Squish, which is today's sponsor, you'll find the link down below in the description, try it out and let me know guys how you like it. All right, so another nifty change that has been added is again on the performance tab. But now if we actually start recording like this and refresh the page, we're gonna see that we now have like a chart of things that have been tracked. All right, this is probably already known to many of you. But what I want to show you is that people at Chrome DevTools enhanced it a lot. So if we open this network tab, we're gonna see our waterfall 
of all the scripts that have been loaded. And now if you hover over one of them, for example, this one, list.json, we're going to see all the queuing and connect and all the metrics that are actually very important for us to understand how our service is working with our front end. And if I now click on this, I'm going to have an arrow. An arrow is going to show me where this request basically originated from. So we're going to see that the list.json actually came from the bundle called index and some kind of hash.js means it was bundled with webpack or something. And this index.js was initiated from the coffee cart app. This looks like an index file. So it's just a quick improvement, but I think it means a lot to us developers. All right, friends. So the next feature I want to show you is in the console or in the sources rather. So in the sources, we have overrides, obviously, but we can also switch to page and page is going to show our um, local code, although this is source maps, but behind the scenes, Chrome maps it to the production code. And we have a page called pages or list page rather, and it's code. It's basically Vue.js. And in Vue.js, we have methods that are, for example, let's say add to cart. So every time we add something to the cart, let me verify um, if we set a breakpoint, it's going to fire. Okay, I want to remove the breakpoint and instead add something called a log point. So log point is basically like a breakpoint, but it's going to fire every time it hits it. So let's say we want to log the name here, I'm going to say name like this, press enter. And now we added a log point. And now every time I click on something, it's going to log out the variable name. So the variable we're trying to log is called the name, and it's going to log. How cool is that? This basically means that we don't have to go to the code and add a log or console logs, we can just look at our code in the sources in the browser and add log points right away. Cool feature. All right, another feature feature I want to talk about is the recorder tab. And many people have heard about it because it's still in the preview feature. But let me tell you that it's a bit buggy. So be careful when using it, but it's still a really good improvement. So what is it about? Well, it lets you record the interactions. So let's say the user journey of your website, and then basically replay it. Or most importantly, if you're using if you're doing E2E testing, for example, with Puppeteer, um, test driver, or Cypress, for example, you can actually export this user journey as a code and import it to your Cypress application. So what we're going to do here is we can create a recording. So I'm going to call it like this, my recording, and I'm going to start recording. So click, click. And as you can see, it's recording all of these steps. Okay, and now I'll skip and that's it basically stop as you can see, it already recorded everything and gave us a hint that we can also add assertions, which is really great. And the clicks are going to have all these metadata, for example, which selectors it used, and what kind of a type of interaction it is. So we can replay it in different speeds. But most importantly, we can also export it. Okay, we can export it in JSON, Puppeteer, and so on. And if we install extra extensions such as Cypress recorder, this is going to be shown here as well. And then we can basically copy and paste this code in our Cypress code. And come on, how cool is that? This is going to save so much time. Okay, another interesting feature I'm going to quickly talk about is living here. Okay, so bootstrap, let's say we have tooltips. Okay, we see a tooltip, it goes away, we see a tooltip, it goes away. But what if I want to debug this tooltip? Okay, what if I Oh, no, what if I want to right click on this tooltip, and for example, change the color of it from black to yellow. Well, um, apparently it doesn't work because I cannot focus on it. what I'm going to do instead is try to inspect this disabled button. Okay, here it is. And I'm going to open my styles here. And if I click on this hover, okay, we all usually have these different element states. But now Chrome also gives us this button called emulate a focused page rather a checkbox. Um, and if I click on this, it's going to focus on the current page. Okay, it's not focusing on the dev tools anymore. Uh, as it says here, but rather, oh no, let's switch the page, don't do that, but rather on the page. And now I can actually debug it much in a, in a much easier way. And I think the tooltip is actually in the after L. Okay, how cool is that? We don't know, we no longer need weird hacks in order to debug disappearing elements on the page. 
Now let's talk about animations, shall we? Let's go to the MacBook Pro page where we first saw the AI suggestion, okay? And here we have a lot of animations that are happening, okay? It's a pretty cool page, I'm gonna refresh it. But what I wanna talk about this is the animations tab, okay? We have the animations here, hold here. So I need to find it somewhere here, more tools and animations. And now apparently Chrome DevTools can record a lot of animations that we have. So as soon as I scroll, it's going to record all of these animations and for example if I click on one of these animations I can actually replay it very easily so I'm gonna do this no this didn't really work so let's go to the iPad like this and yeah I can take this animation and I can move it back in the timeline and not only I can move it back but I can also edit all these animations okay I can make this one longer I can make this one shorter and it's gonna target all specific elements and then it also gives me a link to the actual CSS code, which I can also adjust here. How cool is that? If you want me to talk about the animations panel a bit more, let me know. I'm down in the comments and I'm gonna explore it further. All right, so last but not least, we want to go back to the network page. And one cool thing here that I noticed is that we can actually export all the URLs of all these requests for one or other reason. Okay, maybe we really need to. We can go here, right click, copy, and then copy all URLs. And now if I paste it somewhere, I'm gonna go here and I can actually paste all of these links that I just copied from my network tab. Just in case if you need to know all of your URLs and do something with that. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you learned something. If you did, smash like and subscribe as always, and I'm gonna see you in the next one. Goodbye.